the wind is too loud in this or not. I'm hoping that I can be blocking it. But um, just wanted to give an update on the garden. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of compost that's been delivered. I got five yards put onto this bed, got another seven yards delivered, and I started making out the next bed over there. Um, today, it's the first weekend in May, and um, I wanted to make sure we started getting out some of our brassicas and get some of our colder weather crops or cooler weather crops in the ground. These probably could have gone in the ground a week ago, but I just haven't had time. Um, and we did have some uh, delays getting the, the compost delivered. So the compost was all delivered this week. I got a load on one, uh, no, no, last weekend. I got the first load, so last Saturday, got the first load. And then on Monday, we got another load. So um, yeah, what we got started so far is our brassicas. So over here, Zed, get out of there, bud. Hey, come on, out. Uh, we have a, a row of kale. So these are all different kales in the first row. We have some curly leaves, some Russian red, um, some, uh, I forget the other one's called, there's a Lacinato style that's up there. And then the next row is cabbages. You'll see they're a little further spaced out than the kales are. There's some red cabbages at this end and some green cabbages up at this end. Uh, what we plan to do is succession plant some cabbage. Uh, some of these green ones are long season, so they won't be ready till the fall, but these red ones are quick growing. I think they're like 65 days. So what the goal is that I'm going to do another row down here probably in a week or two and plant some seeds directly in the ground. Uh, and then what will happen is that by the time we be able to harvest this one, they'll be ready. Uh, a couple weeks later, maybe a month later, we'll have some more here. And then at the end of the year, we'll have these. So hopefully we can succession plant those. And then in this row, we have um, some Brussels sprouts and some other greens. So Brussels sprouts, and then I believe these were um, collards. Yeah, these were collards. And then these are just a couple more red kales. And then we have some Japanese kumutsu. I don't know if that's on there. I don't believe I am. But um, whatever those are, I've never gotten them. I got a free pack of seeds from Baker Creek, and I figured I'd give them a try. At this end of the uh, row, we threw in some carrots, if I remember right. Yeah, I took pictures, so I'm pretty sure that there was more carrots here. Um, you figured, oh no, these are turnips. So I put some turnips in the ground. We don't really like to eat the turnips, but the chickens love the greens. So we put them out just so that the chickens could have something to eat. And in this row over here, we have seeds that were planted. So this is all carrots. So we have several um, rows of carrots that are in here. I have five different kinds of carrots and I planted three rows wide of each kind to kind of try out what's going to work well in this area. Uh, we've never grown on this piece of land before, so we're trying it out. But I figured, you know, getting 15 short rows of carrots in um, should give us a good selection and we'll figure out what type grows better. And then after the carrots, we have beets. So we planted a whole bunch of beets, three kinds of beets. Um, and then after the beets, we have um, some fennel. So carrots, beets, fennel. Uh, the next row, as I mentioned, is going to be cabbage some succession planting of cabbage and then probably some swiss chard and um a little bit of um of lettuce we don't grow a ton of lettuce we get a lot of lettuce from our csa and lettuce is fairly inexpensive and bugs just love to eat lettuce so i don't tend to grow a lot of lettuce but i have a red romaine that i got some seeds i think they were also free from baker creek so we're just going to throw some in and see if they go um, if we really like them and they do well, maybe we'll try again in the fall to throw some more in or later in the summer. But most of the time, we don't really grow lettuce that much. Um, so that's what's going to go in here. i got to make another row um, right here to put those in. Basically, the way the rows are working is I'm going one rake width wide for the walkway and two rake widths wide for the, um, for the row itself. So to give an explanation of that, show what it looks like. Um, this is our rake that I'm using here. It's just a standard, you know, short tine rake. You can see that the rows are one width wide and the growing rows are two. Well, this one's a little off because I kind of filled it in, but it's pretty close to two. So, you know, it's not gonna, I'm, I'm doing these kind of by myself here. They're not gonna be exact. I didn't lay down like strings or anything. I don't really care all that much. And then basically what I'm doing is taking the dirt out and flipping it into the, the row here so that I can push down the dirt in the middle or the, the soil in the middle 
and pack it down. Once it's packed down, I'll use my feet to pack it down as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a row of cardboard. So we'll cut a row of, or a line of cardboard as wide as the rake head. Uh, that's why I use the rake head because it's easy to measure um, and I can just do it as I go. We'll put the cardboard down and then we'll put wood chips on top of that. Um, and then if for some reason we don't like this layout because I am experimenting here, I've got a long garden bed that goes long ways this way, but I'm putting my rows this way to just kind of try out and see how things work with the sun here. I feel like I could get better sun exposure doing it this way. So um, we're going to try this. If it doesn't work, the nice thing over the cardboard is that, you know, at the end of the year, the cardboard will be disintegrated already. It does help keep down weeds in the, in the rows. And then if there's wood chips in the way, I can just pull those out. Uh, you know, rake them out at the during the fall, put them in a pile, and the next spring use them where I want to use them. If they're you know if they're not already broken down, so that's the plan. We're going to do that. Get one more row here for some more seed planting, and then I think for the tomatoes because I want the tomatoes to grow real tall is we're going to grow the tomatoes in rows this way. So we're going to break this bed into half. Half of it will have rows this way. The other half will have rows this way. Um, we'll have peppers on this side because the sun is shining this way throughout most of the day so the peppers will be lower and then the tomatoes will be higher so we'll put several rows of tomatoes going this way and then a couple rows of peppers going that way and that should be it for this bed uh, what's going to happen is in the, the other bed and you can see over here uh, this bed I've put cardboard underneath the entire bed kind of like I did at the garden bed at our other lot this is going to be corn and squashes so we really like to grow winter squashes. Um, we will grow a couple of summer squashes as well. They just grow so much, we have a hard time eating them all. Um, and I really like sweet corn. We like to grow corn and if we can get a harvest, that would be amazing and then freeze it. Um, we, we enjoy eating corn all the time. So we're going to grow or attempt to grow some corn here. We'll probably have to put a fence up because we do have deer. Um, you can see the woods are really close here. So we're gonna put a fence up and hopefully we can keep the deer out. We'll give it a shot. Um, last year, the raccoons at the other lot got all of our corn, which was kind of a bummer. But um, we're going to try again. You know, it doesn't hurt to try. We have to get this bed set and then get it amended anyway. So putting all this compost in, getting the corn to grow one year, and then we'll just refertilize. Um, you know, we have the chickens and we're, we have the geese and they create a ton of poop for us. So we'll just um, compost that over the summer uh, in our compost pile and then put more nu nutrients into this next year. So the corn can live off some of the nutrients that are in there now. And then next year, if we, the corn doesn't do well, we won't try again, but we like to experiment and that's kind of what we're thinking for this bed. I know it's a big bed, it's 20 by 40. So it is a lot of space, but corn needs a lot of space if you want to get a good crop. So we plan to plant about a third to a half of this in corn and then the other third to a half in squash. And the squash really just kind of likes to take over, right? Like run everywhere. So we'll just plant squash in there and let it kind of go. Um, and when I say squash, I mean winter squashes, right? So our pumpkins and delicatas and butternuts, things of that nature. Um, we really enjoy eating winter squashes. Um, sure you can't tell it up there, but let's see if I can't zoom in. Yeah, I don't know if you can make them out, but the chickens, the, the baby chicks are out. Uh, today was their first day coming out of the coop. We've had them in the coop with the light on for, oh, I don't know, a week, a week and a half. They're doing well up there, but um, we let them out today. They're all out and having a good time. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, so it was great for them to be out. We also have the geese out um, up by the house. You can't really see them, but they're protected uh, up there. So yeah, it's a great day. Super nice day here in northern New England. Um, the kind of days that we missed when we lived in Florida for sure uh, You know, it's a little bit of a breeze which is probably making the audio not amazing in this video But a teeny little bit of a breeze and the temperature is like 70 degrees and it's just glorious outside I mean it's sunny the leaves are growing, you know popping out on the trees. Just a super super nice day Zed's having a good time running around uh, one more thing I can show you is our when we were walking through the property and checking it out, uh, when we bought this, of course, it was late in the fall. We hadn't had a chance to really look at stuff. We were told there was a berry patch over here. We're not so sure that there's any berries left. This looks like it's all just ferns and weeds. So we're probably just gonna tear this all up and plant raspberries here, which is fine. We like raspberries and we would really like to have a raspberry patch. So we're thinking that our raspberry patch will be here. But we do have, which we're really excited about, is a lot, a lot, a lot of really nice looking uh, rhubarb. I love rhubarb. Um, Diane's not a huge fan of rhubarb, but we all like rhubarb. Um, and these guys just look terrific. I mean, if you can see these rhubarbs, they are sprouting like nuts. 
Um, we have a lot of fresh growth in there. These rhubarb plants are looking amazing. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, outside of the rhubarb, we also have some really big blueberry bushes. We're gonna plant a couple more blueberries in here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, very well established. These guys are six feet tall. These are huge blueberry plants. The neighbors tell us that last year, the previous owners of this house did not actually pick the blueberries. So they picked the blueberries last year. The neighbors gave them permission, of course. And um, they got buckets of blueberries off of these. So we're super excited about that. Um, we're gonna probably put another one or two blueberry plants here to kind of finish this patch out, let it continue to go down here. Um, and then have the rhubarb in the middle. And then after the rhubarb, we're going to do all berries. So it's going to be raspberries, I believe. Diane and I both really enjoy raspberries. So we're going to stick with that. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to give a little bit of an update on the garden, how things are coming, what it's looking like out here. Um, we're really excited to get the growing season going uh, up here in the northern parts of the country. We don't have a super long growing season. You know, when I lived in Florida, I could plant all year round, like literally the entire year. Um, you know, in the winter, you know, winter, and I say that with air quotes around it, we would have all of our cold weather crops, so these kind of crops would grow. Um, and it would oftentimes be so hot, even in the winter, that these guys would melt and we would not be able to get good harvests. I was never able to get a cabbage to head down there. Um, we were able to grow some Swiss chard and some kale, but um, yeah, it's difficult, uh, in, at least in the winter time, to, to get some of your cold weather crops to grow. But right now, you know, we're happy to get it going. What I was trying to say though, is that we have a very short season here. You know, it's difficult to get stuff in the ground here and get it going. And uh, you have to take the moment that it arrives, right? You gotta jump on it. So this early in the year here, we're gonna start planting out our, um, our brassicas. Now these brassicas could definitely take a frost um, and then we will most likely still have another frost. So you'll notice I'm not putting out tomatoes, I'm not putting out peppers. I'm not putting out any of our cold weather crops or our warm weather crops because they just won't be able to handle it. It's too much. Too um, it's a beautiful day today, but it will not be beautiful until June. So we'll wait until June 1st once we get June 1st around or, or we'll watch the forecast. You know, if it's late in May and the forecast for the next week or so doesn't show anything close to a, a frost in the forecast, we might chance putting them out a little earlier. But even then, that's a risk. You know, it's a risk. You put out your tomatoes and your peppers that you've been babying for two months in the house and they get knocked out by one frost. That's a real big bummer, right? And then you gotta go out and buy starts. I really don't wanna have to do that. And I like the, the multiple types of varieties that we have that we can grow ourselves. So I'm gonna, you know, be cautious with those. But these brassicas can definitely handle a frost. If we get down into the 30s, probably even the upper 20s, they'll be okay as long as uh, it doesn't happen in the next day or two while they're adjusting to the to the new um, you know planting space. But that's why we looked at the forecast now. It's pretty good. Okay, well that's going to be it for right now. Like I said, we're going to get uh, another row in here of some seeds at some point in the next day or two. And then probably a row of potatoes and then everything else is going to be tomatoes and peppers. But uh, we'll check back in in a couple weeks, show you what this is looking like, how it's going. We're going to get some hoops up or some uh, fabric cloth up there to protect this from any kind of bugs or animals that want to come and take a snack on it. And um, yeah, we're going to get going. We're really excited. Hope you guys are having a good spring. Hope wherever you live, the snow is all melted if you have snow and, uh, you know, planting season's underway. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you click that little bell, you'll get notified anytime that we post updates, which we'll be posting updates all summer. All right, thanks again.